Hello and welcome to this new series on topic modeling and text classification, all in Python for the purposes of the digital humanities. That is a mouthful for a name. Uh, this series is going to introduce you to everything from beginning concepts that we're going to start to explore in this video to full-on text classification, uh, topic modeling, algorithms, rules-based, and all and machine learning-based, all in Python over the course of probably what's going to be about the next uh, 20 or so videos, which I've got divided up because uh, this is kind of a tentative part schedule for this series. Part one is going to deal with kind of key concepts and terms that you need to understand about uh, topic modeling and text classification. And there's going to be about three or so videos in that, starting with this one in just a few minutes. Uh, part two is then going to move on to kind of a more rules-based approach to uh, topic modeling, for lack of a better word. We're going to explore TF-IDF with uh, uh, scikit-learn. And this TF-IDF is... Uh, uh, term frequency inverse document frequency, which is going to be a rules-based algorithm for determining kind of the topics of a large section of or large amount of documents within a corpus. And then in part three, we're going to start moving into more uh, machine learning based topic modeling methods, the LDA models that we are going to explore with Jensum. And finally, we're going to start looking at kind of not really topic modeling per se, rather text classification. And we're going to do that with Spacey. And it's my hope that this will lead nicely into my custom neural network series for binary text classification and the future one on multi-class text classification. So more custom tailored solutions that involve more deep learning, not just machine learning, where you actually are creating custom architectures. So that's the general layout for the course and these four parts. But really what I want to talk about right now is kind of this key question. Uh, what is topic, topic modeling and why should you use it? So topic modeling is the process by which you take a giant corpus, a corpus that you probably couldn't realistically get through in a single human lifetime or get through in, with any um, kind of realistic time frame. So thousands, hundreds of thousands of documents, these kinds of large corpora is what we're talking about here. And the idea of topic modeling is to use distance reading or various computational methods for analyzing that massive corpus so that you can discern some kind of key ideas or key topics from all of those texts. Now, as digital humanists, we value close reading above all things. So the big question that I oftentimes hear is, and, and this is for good reason, why use topic modeling? Why do this distance reading? It's been it's been debunked, it's been criticized for decades. Why use it? Well, there's really two different reasons why you should consider using it. Let's take the most skeptical first. Let's say you are a humanist who believes that close reading is the essential cornerstone of, of the fields relevant to the humanities. So if you're in history, it's a close reading of historical texts. That's typically what you'd expect from a traditional uh, humanist environment, research environment. So the reason why you might want to use it in this scenario is imagine that your corpus does have, let's say, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of texts. Now, what's often typical in these kinds of projects is you take a subset of those documents to explore those closely, and you read them carefully, and then you kind of produce some kind of article, or if it's worthy enough, some kind of monograph on the subject. In this scenario, how do you choose that subset of texts? Are they archive-based, so tech ar uh, texts that only come from one specific archive? Are they uh, temporally-based, so texts that only come from a small, maybe one-year window when all the corpora or all the texts in the corpus deal with a 100-year uh, window? Are they regional, so you're only going to look at the texts that come out of one specific city, perhaps, instead of the entire country that the corpus deals with? You have to make decisions to address and tackle a subset of texts. The other question then is, what if you wanted to tackle that ent entire corpus based on some kind of thematic concept? So some kind of topic, if you will. This is where topic modeling will come in. It will allow for you to get a good sense of all the texts in that corpus without actually manually reading them. And then it'll generate some, give you some sense of the clusters of texts. So what texts are most similar? And then you, as the humanist, can then take that little subset. Let's say it's only 1% of the corpus. You now have raw data to justify exploring a subset that is independent of 
uh, accessible or structured metadata, meaning it, you're not justifying it based on region. You're not justifying it based on archive or time. These are all known metadata. You're justifying it based on some kind of algorithm to perform targeted research. So perhaps your corpus deals with its uh, testimonies of violence. You want to deal with specific kinds of violence, arson, etc. So you look at clusters that deal closely with arson, burning, things of this um, this fire nature, this igneous kind of concept. Topic modeling provides a way to find documents that are common with one another in, in such large corpora. Or corpora. And so that's one reason why you might want to do use topic modeling to perform targeted research. The other time you might want to use uh, topic modeling is to actually draw conclusions about a corpora. And this is uh, about a corpus. And this is what oftentimes would be viewed with some skepticism in the humanities. So let's say you have a corpus like we're going to work with in this series that is 22,000 uh, descriptions long. We're going to be dealing with this uh, data set in a later video. It comes from South Africa during the apartheid from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, part of a project that I'm working on with uh, a bunch of other scholars. And so what we're going to be doing is looking at these 22,000 descriptions of, of violence and using topic modeling, both rules-based and machine learning-based, to get a sense of what's in the data without actually manually reading them. So one of the things I could use topic modeling for if I wanted to explore all these things, as we will in this series, is I could use it to draw some conclusions. How do descriptions of violence in this very uh, rigid data structure that the, the TRC Volume 7 re report actually has, um, what kind of patterns do I see? I can use clustering to get a sense of how, uh, use topic modeling to get a sense of how docu these documents cluster together, which ones are similar, which ones aren't. Maybe I can see and discern some kind of really uh, distant conclusions. Do we see violence move up in certain times of the year? Do we see it peak at certain times of the year? Do we see it go down? Do we see certain individuals from certain regions kind of get clustered together? Do we see particular groups that come up frequently in these documents? Do we see them being associated with specific kinds of violence? As we're going to see in the series, we can discern a lot of information about our corpus using topic modeling that we can use to then safely draw some fairly good conclusions about that data. Now, if we are humanists in this situation and we still view it with some skepticism, it would be expected that you then go and explore that data more closely to test to see if those conclusions are in fact valid. This is what we're going to be exploring in this series, topic modeling. We're going to explore the very basic concepts in the next couple videos to getting our hands dirty with TF-IDF to using machine learning. And we're going to be really kind of meeting a bunch of different libraries in this series. We're going to be meeting... Uh, Scikit-Learn, which is going to be the standard scientific library for using different algorithms such as TF-IDF, K-means. If you don't know what those are now, you will in part two by the end of that. We're going to be using the Jensen library. Those of you who have watched my Name Density Recognition series will be familiar with Jensen. We used it in that series to generate word vectors. In this series, we're going to be using it to actually create, train, and utilize LDA models, which is a type of topic modeling. And then finally, we're going to be working with the Spacey Library to use its text classifier to classify text. And then in part four, five, which isn't listed here, you're going to be introduced to TensorFlow and Keras and learn how to make custom deep learning neural networks to do targeted, customized uh, text classification. That's going to be it for this video, though. Stick around. And in the next three or so videos, we're going to be getting key terms, key concepts all figured out so that we can go forward with topic modeling and have a good sense of what it is conceptually and what the key terminology is so that we can have a basic foundation moving forward as we start to explore topic modeling with TF-IDF in part two. That's going to be it for now. Thank you for listening. And if you're excited about this series like I am, please like and subscribe down below.